Good morning, my dear students. Hope you are safe at home. Today we will start our session with Unit 1, Lesson 2, Matter Construction. First, we studied before that our bodies consist of groups of systems, right? Like circulatory system, urinary system, digestive systems. And the system consists of groups of organs like heart, stomach, right? And the organs it consists of groups of tissues and the tissues it consists of group of cell. So the building unit of the living organisms is the cell. I'm talking today about the matter. Is the matter have the building unit? Yes. What is the building unit of the matter? It's called molecule. What is the meaning of molecule? If I drop the, the, the beaker on the floor, what will happen? It will be broken. Okay, I took the small pieces. If the small piece of the beaker is made of wood, is made of iron, or is made of glass, they have the same properties of the beaker. And also, if I have an iron nail, the small pieces of the iron nail is made of wood, is it glass? No, it's iron also. So the smallest building unit or the smallest part of matter that can exist freely and had the properties of the matter, it's called molecule. And it is the building unit of the matter. So what is the building unit of the matter it's called? It's called molecule. It is the smallest part of matter which can exist freely and have the properties of the matter. Okay, to show that the matter is composed of molecules, we will make an activity. We will bring a bottle of perfume. And we first, we will measure its mass by using the digital scale. And we will record its mass. It will be 100 gram. Then I open the bottle of the perfume and move to another side of the classroom. Then return back and measure its mass. What will we observe? First, we will smell the perfume all over the room, right? And when we measure its mass, we will find it decreases till they reach 95 gram. Which means that the matter in any state. Did you remember that the matter has three states? Solid, liquid, or gas as a state. It's composed of small building units called molecules. Okay, if the molecules have the properties, I want to describe the molecules. How we can describe the molecules? To describe anything, you have to know their properties. So the molecules have the properties. What are the properties of the molecule? First property is it's the molecules of the matter are in state of continuous motion. I can't understand. What is the meaning of state of continuous motion? We will make a simple experiments to know what is the meaning that the molecules are in a state of continuous motion. We will bring a beaker containing water and a spoon of potassium permanganate and put it inside the beaker and shake it carefully. What will you observe? Oh my gosh! All the water inside the beaker becomes purple. Why? Why? Because the molecules of the potassium permanganate spreads all over the water. So the molecules of the, of the matter are state of continuous motion. Okay? So let's talk about, before we talk about the second properties of the molecules, let's have a question. If I put a drop of ink inside the cup of water, what will you observe? Can you answer these questions? Yes, the molecules of the ink will spread all over the cup of water. Why? Because the molecules of the ink are in a continuous motion in all directions. Okay, let's talk about the second properties which is the intermolecular spaces among the molecules. To know that the molecules have, each matter have intermolecular spaces. 
the solid substance, the spaces between the molecules in the solid substance is very small. What about the water? The spaces between the molecules of the water, is it small? Is it large? Is it very large? We will know. And what is the spaces between uh, the gases? Is it large? Is it small? Is it very large? We will observe it, but first we will make an experiment. I have a cylinder containing alcohol and another cylinder containing water. And I will make a mixture between alcohol and water. But first I have to record the volume of the water is 100 or like we see in our experiment, we mixture of 300 cubic centimeter of the water and 200 cubic centimeter of ethyl alcohol to make a mixture. Let's see. We will observe that the mixture will be less than 500 cubic centimeter. Why? Why? We will put 300 to one to 200. The mixture should be 500 cubic centimeter. But we will note that or we will observe that the mixture less than 500 cubic centimeter. Because the molecules of the alcohol spreads in the spaces between the molecules of the water. So the mixture will be less than 500 cubic centimeter because they are intermolecular spaces among the molecules of the matter. What is the meaning of intermolecular space? It is the space among the molecules of the matter or it is the space between the molecules of the matter. Now I have a question. Give reason. Disappearance of a little amount of table salt when we put it inside the beaker containing water for a period of time. Why? Why the salt is disappeared? Because the molecules of the table salt spread in the intermolecular spaces among the water molecules. Now we will talk about the third properties of the molecules, which is the intermolecular forces or the attraction force. If I have this iron stick and I have this beaker, okay? If I try to break this stick, is it easy or it's very hard? And if I try to pour the water inside another cup, is it easy or it's very hard? In the first, it's very hard to break a piece of iron. Why? Because the, there is a force that binds the molecules of the iron, which is called the attraction force. The attraction force that binds the molecules of the iron is very strong. So it's very hard to break it. But it's too easy to classified a cup of water or beaker, a big beaker, into small beaker. Why? Because the attraction force between the molecules of the liquid is weak. And otherwise, the attraction force between the gases, molecules, is very weak. Like we, show, uh, like we see in the figure, okay? So the attraction force between the molecules of the iron or aluminium is very strong. And the attraction force between the liquid molecules are weak, such as water, alcohol, and oil. What about the attraction force of the, uh, between the gases molecules are almost not found. As we made in the experiment, when we opened the, the, the bottles of the perfume, the, the smell of the perfume spreads all over the room because the attraction force between the gases molecules almost not found. Okay, so what is the meaning of intermolecular force or the attraction force? It is the force that binds the molecules of the matter together. It is the force that binds the molecules of the matter together.
Now we will make a comparison between solid, liquid, and gas. We will see that the space, this is the solid molecules, and this is the liquid molecules, and this is the gas molecules. We will find that the spaces between the solid molecules is very small, but the, sm the spaces between the liquid molecules is large, and the gases molecules, the spaces between it is very large. What about the attraction force that we talked before? The attraction force between the solid molecules is very strong, so it's very hard to break it. But the attraction force between the liquid molecules is very we is weak. So it's easily to classify the water into uh, the, the, the amount of water into small cups. But the attraction force between the gases molecules don't exist. Okay, and we talked about the volume and the shape in primary, that the volume of the solid is definite. As we put, if I left the iron nail for many years on the desk. Is it changed? It's not changed because they have definite shape. Is it becomes very big or smaller? It becomes tall or shorter? No, it doesn't change because they have definite shape and definite volume. What about the liquid? No, the liquid change their shape because they, sh they took the shape of container. If I put it inside the beaker, the, the liquid took the same shape of the beaker. If I put it inside a plastic cup, it will take the shape of the plastic cup. If I put it inside a circle shape, it will take the shape of the circle. So the liquid has indefinite shape, but definite volume. What about the gas? The gas change its shape and volume, so it has indefinite shape and indefinite volume. Okay? I will ask a question. If I have an ice cube, is it solid or liquid or gas? It is solid. Okay. If I left the ice cube for a short period of time, what will happen? The ice begins to change or the ice begin to melt and they will change from salt state into liquid state. But they need to gain thermal energy. They need to gain thermal energy. So the change of matter states from state to another needs thermal energy as shown in figure cases. If I put ice cubes inside the beaker and put it on the heater, I will check the shape of the solid molecules, the ice. We will see that the, the spaces between the solid molecules is very small and the attraction force is strong. But when it begin to heat or it begin to melt, we will find that the solid molecules, the spaces begin to become very large and the attraction force become weak. So the, the solid begins to change into liquid. And this is called melting process. It is the change of the matter from solid state to liquid state by heating. Okay. What about the change of a matter from the liquid state to the gas state? If I put the water inside the beaker and put it on the heater and uh, begins to uh, heat it, we will find that the water, this is the water, this is my water. What about the spaces between the molecules? Is large, right? And what about the attraction force between the molecules? is weak. So when they gain thermal energy, they move, the molecules begin to, to move very fast and the speed increases. So when the speed increases, the attraction force begins to change into very weak and the, 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 the spaces between the molecules becomes very 
large. So the matter begins to change from the liquid state into gases state. And this is called vaporization process. What is the meaning of vaporization process? It is the change of matter from the liquid state to the gases state. Beginning of our session, we said that the matter consists of molecules, right? And we said that the molecules is the smallest form of matter that can exist freely and have the properties of the matter. Now we will talk about an atom. What is the meaning of atom? Atom is the fundamental building unit of the matter. So our matter consists of molecules and our molecules consist of atoms, okay? Now we will talk about the kind of molecules. I have two kind of molecules, element molecules and compound molecules. But before we talk about the difference between element and compound, we have to know what is the meaning of element. If I have this glass sheet, okay, can we extract gold from this glass sheet? Can we extract wood? Can we extract element, uh, iron? No, only glass. So this is called element. What is the meaning of element? Element is the simplest form of, mat of matter, which can't be analyzed chemically into simpler form. So it is the simplest form. Again, what is the meaning of element? Element is the simplest form of matter that can't be analyzed into simpler form. And it is formed of one or two similar atoms. It's formed of two or one similar atoms that combine together. Like, I have elements that, ha that consist of only one atom, which is called monoatomic. If the element consists of only one atom, it's called monoatomic, like mercury. Mercury is monoatomic element in liquid state. And I have another element which is consists of only one atom. It's called noble gases or inert gases. Noble gases or inert gases. Uh, we will study uh, after and we will know that it's uh, don't share in the chemical reactions, but we will talk about it later. So noble gases or inert gases, it's gases that consist of only one atom or monoatomic, like helium, He, neon, Ne, argon, Ar, krypton, xenon, radon. Okay? And I have the elements that consist of two atoms similar combined together and they are called diatomic such as bromine Br and it's in liquid state and active gases such as oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine. Okay, you know the oxygen gas that we breathe, it's called O2. It consists of two oxygen atoms that combine together to form oxygen molecule, okay? This is our element. And I have another element that consists of three, uh, three uh, atoms, which is called triatomic, such as ozone O3, okay? Now we will talk about the compound. But before we talk about the compound, I want to revision about the elements. What's the meaning of element? The simplest pure form of matter that can't be analyzed into simpler form. And it consists of one or two atoms similar and combined together. Okay? Now we will talk about the compounds. Compounds is result from the combination of two or more different elements two or more different elements. So the difference between element and compound, that the element consists of one or two similar atoms, but the compound consists of two or more different atoms, okay? This is my compound, such as hydrogen chloride molecule. This is the first example of compound. It consists of chlorine atom combined with hydrogen atom. So they form compound. And I have another compound which is called water. You know the water. 
the our water is consist of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms so how many atoms we have in these uh, molecules we have three atoms how many elements i have two different elements i have two different elements time i have another example which is called ammonia molecule how many atoms we have in ammonia molecules we will count all the atoms one two three four so we have four atoms what about the elements how many elements we have right we have two different elements two different element. Thank you.